2006 when they started the new 2006 correct? when they started the new automated program they changed their ordinances a little bit so that they would pair up with the uh, the new program that they were bringing in into the uh, city well those ordinances have not changed the hundred dollar fines have always been there the 350 dollar fine has always been there the only thing that's been different is we're finally beginning to enforce it. Garbage has gotten so out of control, recycling has gotten so out of control, that in order for us to be able to manage our operation and provide the services that you need, we have to be able 
to be able to control the operation and the expenses. Currently, we have 90 vehicles that are out there. Out of the 90 vehicles, we have to have 69 running every day. So those of you who are math whizzes, you can run this one. On average, we have 40% of our fleet down. 40%. So sometimes you're going to see these old trucks coming down the road. Sometimes they, when they sweep the garbage and try to pack it, we leave a little glass because the trucks have got holes in the back. We're working on getting those fixed. And I know some of you probably called and said, why is you leaving glass on my street? Well, now you have the answer. We have trucks in operation that are 1979, 1999, 95, 95, 1995, okay, the bodies are rusted, they're old, and, you know, just like anything else that gets used as much as we get use these trucks, I mean, these trucks run on average of 8 to 12, sometimes even 14 hours a day. And that's why I said we're trying to get control of things again. Our program was designed so that you were issued two carts. A black cart for your garbage, a blue cart for your recycling. The program is designed so all your garbage goes into the black can and your recycling goes into the blue can. That's simple. What's happened is, because this is a throwaway world, and a lot of people don't recycle, we'll pull up to a house and there may be 20 bags of garbage surrounding the black can, okay? Well, that's not the way the program is designed to work. The, the blue can will be totally empty, but you'll have all this garbage out. The driver has to get out, he has to go and take and move all the bags so we can lift the can. And then we have to have another truck because the one-armed bandit, as we call it, the automated truck, it can't, you can't load bags of garbage to the top because there's only one place to put it, in the top of the vehicle. So, there's a lot of work that has to go into it, a lot of planning that has to go into it for us to be able to manage your waste on a daily basis. Our trucks break down, we have to send another truck. Sometimes we have really old trucks picking up your garbage, and I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Um, just like any other business, there's a lot of money in that has to be, caught, be um, used to repair your trucks, your fleet, keep them running. Well, we're charging $8.75 a month. That's what we charge, eight seventy-five. The gentleman said, well, that's a lot of money. And you're right, it is. But <clears throat> I, did a, I did a kind of a survey when I came to work here because the rate was so low. And um, where I came from, where I was working previously before they recruited me and asked me to come help them with this, this program, was Anchorage, Alaska. Our residents paid $19.75 a month for their garbage, okay? Same program you have, same exact program, only they paid more, okay? But with that $19.75 a month, I was able to manage the program, okay? Manage it and stay within budget every year. <coughs> it was based on the... Uh, Excuse me, just one minute. I'm uh, having a battle with allergies. I apologize. With this, with our program here, the 875 does not cover our expenses. Okay? And I know it seems like a lot, but other cities this size, we've got 400,000 residents here. There's cities like Houston. Austin, Texas, Los Angeles, San Diego, Oklahoma City, even Baltimore. Baltimore is more our size in comparison. They charge $30 a month to be able to provide service to their citizens. 
They provide the same thing we do. Recycling, garbage collection, bulk, okay, and yard waste. Now, what a lot of folks don't think about is because we only charge $875 a month, we still should be able to pick everything up carpool. Well, bottom line is, if you picked everything up that people are putting out right now, we couldn't pay for the disposal. It costs the city of, of Cleveland $28.54 per ton to dispose of garbage. $28.54. We dispose of 310,000 tons a year. It's a lot of garbage at $28.54. Uh -oh. Already? Or were you just yawning? No, where does that garbage go? I have a question. Our garbage goes to the Republic Transfer Station. Uh, excuse me, the Republic Landfill. We own, the, we own the transfer station, and we gather all the garbage, and we take it to Republic, which is in Lorraine County, and we pay them $28.54. That's where our garbage goes. Right now, our recycling, we have a 60% contamination rate in recycling. The worst rate I've ever seen. What does that mean? Your, your blue bin, whatever you put in it, 60% of it's trash. Garbage. 60% of it. And that's, you know, it's, it's our fault. It's, it's our fault. It's not your fault. We're not telling you what you need to really put in it. We're not doing a good job of public education. That's one of the things that we're working on right now. You had another question, ma'am? Actually, she did. Oh. I was just wondering, when you said it's 60% contamin contaminated, so that the stuff that you're saying should, it should go in the black bin? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yeah. You, you know, when we pull up to a stop, and we pull up and there's a blue bin that everybody knows, blue bin is recycling, right? Yeah. yeah? When we pull up to a stop and that blue bin is full of sheetrock and there's a, a, there's some aluminum and recycling on the bottom, we can't separate that. If we had to stop at every stop and do that, we'd be picking up a route for two or three days. So we can't. So it has to get put into the trash. And we can't ship, send it to our, our vendor who processes our recycling because they're going to charge us to sort it. They're going to charge us for all the trash. So if we take in and sending them 28,000 tons a year, 60% of that 28,000 tons is contaminated. Run those figures at $28.54 a ton. So, yes, ma'am? Does the same truck pick up garbage and recycle? If your bin shows any contamination whatsoever, they will put it in. No. I would separate it and I thought go in with garbage, although I separated it. Okay. Well, if that happens, you need to call us so we can make sure that we're not doing that. That you know, in any business you're gonna find you, you can't watch everything every minute. It's, you have to rely on people telling you there's problems. And that's one of the things that I like about the city. A lot of folks come to me and say, hey, did, would you check into this? And, and I do. And lots of times I find out it's, it's a misunderstanding or for some reason um, it had to be thrown away. Okay? Just, uh, I think people are confused. It's obvious that bottles and tin cans and things like that, but uh, I'm not setting you up. But He's setting me up. <laughs> Where's Cliff? You promised me this wouldn't happen. <laughs> Is something like this recyclable because there's some sort of coating on that? That's, that's box board. That's the same as a cereal box. It is recyclable. Recyclable, okay. And that's not. This is not. No. Hold it up. Anybody know the difference? <laughs> that's styrofoam. No. That's not styrofoam. It's paper. It's paper, but it's a drink cup. Drink cups have a coating on them, okay?
Okay. That's why I say we're not doing a good enough job educating you as to what you need to know. Okay, so we're going to work harder on that. In the years to come, we're going to work a lot harder on that. That cup, so that you can keep hot or cold fluid in it, has to have a coating in order for the for the pulp for the paper to stay together. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Okay, okay. So you're, you're saying if we're in doubt, put it put in the garbage. If you're in doubt. Throw it out. Okay. We put it in the garbage. And we don't have a problem with that because you know what? This, that's the same thing. Same thing, sir. It's a drink cup. It's coated. Trash. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One at a time. That is what you were saying. If, it's, if there's doubt, it goes in the garbage can. If there's doubt, throw it out. So why yes. doesn't everybody just put it all in the garbage? Well, that's that's a good question, man. You know, if if the program worked the way it was, if the program worked the way it was designed, one of the reasons people started recycling was the cost of landfill landfilling has gotten so expensive. We're running out of places to, to put landfills. People don't understand that you just can't stick a landfill in somebody's neighborhood. If, if there was a big vacant lot here. Would you like us to put a landfill there? No. Or would you object to it? Object. There you go. You see? So, so it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not that we don't want to you know, make it easy for you. But what we're trying to do is, number one, if we recycle, we can give us more landfill space. And that means we'll have more years. Um, in Alaska, because I had so much area there, I had a landfill that was... I had 115 years life expectancy on that landfill because it was so huge, okay? Here, we don't have that. We don't have the, not all areas that people site landfills in or try to site them in are, are suitable for landfills according to the government standards. And they're trying to protect your drinking water. They're trying to protect all your natural resources. They're trying to protect this earth for our children, our grandchildren, and their children. So it's got to be a team effort. We've got to work, figure out how we're going to do this, and how we're going to do it so that we can afford it. I have a couple questions. What about my grass clippings? Now, every time I put them in a bag, they throw them in the garbage. So it's, it's, it's considered trash. We do not have, and I'll repeat this, we do not have a composting program. Okay, uh, a lot of people uh, I've seen do their own backyard composting with, with grass clippings, okay, or with leaves. That's great for, for your lawn. You know, you take and uh, you compost your, um, your leaves when you rake them up. Great for the, for the flower beds. It's great um, when you take and recycle your grass by composting it, okay? But no, we do not have a program. That's why they go in the garbage. So would they be a plastic or paper? Recycle the plastic or let, paper? Let him finish and I'll be back to you. Sir. I'm a senior citizen. I take five medications. So every quarter, I, you know, every year I have 60 pill bottles. Are those pill bottles recyclable? Those pill bottles, if, they, if you flip it over and there's a little triangle there that has a number that's one between one and five, okay? It would be acceptable right now. Throw in the garbage. Yes, sir. You know, I'm going to tell you, the paper bags. When you go to Home Depot, the paper bags cost a ridiculous amount of money. Okay. Right now, our program it doesn't benefit you to use the paper bags. Okay. When we go by your house, if you have 20 bags, only 20, up to 20, of yard waste, and it's yard waste, that's acceptable. We will take your 20 bags of yard waste. We will take four tires, four, okay? We will take your black bin and your blue bin. That's a normal pickup, okay? Uh-oh. 
She's been looking like she wanted to ask me a question. <laughs> I just need clarification on the yard waste. Yes. What about the branches? It's usually grass or leaves. Right, but for, I'm talking about branches, like tree branches. It, I know they have to be three foot and more than 24 inches. Is there a limit to how many bundles of those you put out? That's part one. Part two is, is it okay we just put our grass clippings in an empty plastic garbage can? And they empty them every week. They're, they're gonna, you're gonna end up getting a citation. So, but if we put them, we, if we, we don't put them in the on, paper folks. bag, and we put them in plastic, how are they gonna know that's not extra garbage? Well, what we do, what the guys do, is they're all trained. They know what, when they know to peel the bags, okay? If they feel it and something goes, clink, 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 that means it's not garbage. But if they feel it and it goes squish, squish, and it sounds like air, then they know that's, that's the argument. Okay. Okay, and then the other thing on your branches, you know, they have to be three foot. Right. Okay, they need to be bundled. Right. All right, and it needs to be an acceptable weight. 40 pounds is the maximum. Right. Okay, but it has to be an acceptable weight so that they can pick it up. Because we're trying, we're trying to avoid injuries. Sure. If you got five, ten bundles, it's okay. As long as it meets that standard. Okay. Okay, and your 20 bags of yard waste. I have to bundle it? You can do that. You can do that. Remember, you can still put your yard waste in your black bin. The only thing is, a lot of people put so much yard waste in their bins, they don't have room for their garbage, and then they want to put a bag of garbage out. You have to, you have to balance it. That's why we recommend you put it in plastic bags. Let's talk about recourse here. You get a ticket, and you don't agree with it. Who do you call? What do you do? Uh, call Marty. <laughs> I'll be on his list tomorrow. No, actually, if you um, the process for a citation is real simple. What happens is they'll go by and they'll write you a notice. It's just a notice, okay? And they'll stick it either on the can or on the door. If the fence is locked, they'll put it on the can. Sometimes they put it right on the fence. Um, it's wherever they think you're going to see it, okay? That notice just tells you that you have been issued a citation. The actual citation comes to the owner of the property. So if you're renting, you're not going to see it. It's going to go to, the, to your landlord. But if you're the property owner, the citation will come to you. And when you get the citation, if you look at it, there is a process in which you can appeal or you can just say, okay, I did it. I'll write the check, pop the check in the mail. Okay, that's not gonna happen, I heard that, okay. Did they attach that to your water bill? If you don't run down and pay it, do they attach that $100? No, ma'am. Why not? What do they do with it, though? The hundred dollars? That's the point. They attach it right out of our property tax. Remember now, the folks that you're sending this to are the people that handle the parking tickets. That doesn't okay. give me any confidence. <laughs> well, and the reason I said that, sir, it's the same process. If you get parking tickets and you don't pay them, eventually it's it's gonna it's gonna add up, and they're either gonna you're either well, gonna get in getting trouble. Me a ticket. Now you're talking about a garbage man giving me a ticket. So I want to know where my recourse is. Would I you gave you your recourse. I'm not gonna call Marty. I want to know why I can't call your office or the person that. Feel free to call my office, sir. I. You know what? I, I, I ask people, and I, at every meeting where I go and speak, sir, I always give them my number. If you'd like to, sir, I'll, and you've got your pen handy, I'll write you my number. Right, I'll give you my number right now. I'll take your business card for you. It's 664 Now, are you talking about the citation or the... The citation, why can't they go in the water? Because we're charged on that water. It's two separate entities, ma'am. Okay, well, one is, one is what and one is... One is, one is, our citations are handled through the same folks that handle parking, which is handled by county, okay? Our, your water bill. It's a, it's a joint relationship, ma'am. Do you mind? Certainly, Thank you. certainly. Um, yeah, and I, I don't issue the citations. I don't. Um, I do get a lot of calls, but 
so the, the bill is on the water bill because that's what the city of Cleveland sends out, right? Well, uh, yeah. the, the proceeds from it, that if you pay the ticket, it doesn't go to the water department, it can't. The water department is an enterprise fund. I didn't right, say only ratepayers' money goes into exactly. the water department. So this is just like the parking ticket. It goes to Cleveland Municipal Court, the clerk's office. They're the ones that process the ticket, put it on the docket, and that's who you would appeal it to, the same as um, any yeah, other ticket. That's a criminal system. You but it, the money goes to our general fund. It's like criminals. We shouldn't have to go through all that. I if, agree. If we got a fine, I agree. let's go down to where he is. Let's get it figured out. We tried that. When? When it first started. And it did not work because he's not a judge and jury, right? It had to be, we, there has to be a stick or nobody's going to comply. There has to be something. I do agree with that. And the ordinance was from 2006 and we amended it a little bit. I support the commissioner in a lot of the things that Okay, so where's all this money going? The money goes to the general fund. The and money goes, the same that, that supplements his budget yeah. is the general fund. Taxpayer, income tax, primarily income tax. So he's payers. not getting enough to get new trucks out of this whole thing. The citations have nothing to do with it. I mean, it's it goes to the general fund. I think his explanation was originally was the 875 doesn't cover the budget for waste collection. What is the 875? Waste collection, but it's not enough to cover his entire so budget. So you need more money out of the general fund. Yeah, where's your budget from that sure. You shouldn't have that money because you need more money. All right, hold on. I'm confused. The 875 is not enough to take care of the bill. So out of the general fund, the general fund subsidizes the rest of the uh, garbage. Correct. Just like police, fire, EMS, everything. Parks, rec. Did I answer your question or did I completely not? Which is usual. No, because, because of the fact is, is that if he has the budget, like the city of Cleveland, every department says, Next year, I need, ahead of time, I need 10 new trucks. Here's my budget. I need that money. We cannot pick up garbage unless we have 10 new trucks. Now, can he get this money through his, through all this garbage? Yeah, if you want to pay $30 a month. That's not true. Because if they're giving out tickets, we don't know how much they're collecting. In but we don't see we'll anything in the ticket thing. Oh, I, I you're can, not getting it. The general fund is getting the proceeds from the ticket. The general fund. Okay, so your budget for the city of Cleveland. Okay. When you do your budget, where are you getting your money from? The general fund? A portion of it comes from the general fund, and, and yeah. a portion of it comes from the 875 a month. The 875 a month generates $15 million a year. Our budget for operating is $26,500,000 a year. That's what it costs me. Okay. So still, all in all, it's coming from the general fund and this whole Mickey Mouse thing that you're talking about. But us, as citizens, I still say you're treating us like criminals on this $100 ticket for garbage. You got other, don't you have more important things to do? There can't be that many dollars. Well, unfortunately, I can tell you right now. Oh, thank God, that's all. Yes. Yeah. Hold on, folks. Hold on. Let, let me get control of the courtroom again, okay? Um, for, first off, first off, okay, we don't intend to treat you as a criminal. That's not the reason for this. We are not law enforcement officers. Our job is not to write tickets, okay? I walk around with a badge. You know what a badge does in the, in the city of Cleveland? It makes me a target. Okay, I am not, I'm not a police officer, and we don't intend to, to, to cause you any harm or headaches, ma'am, but when there's not compliance, now I will tell you, I just, I just reviewed the citations for last month. $727,000. That's what we wrote. That's how much non-compliance is out there, man. Say that again. Seven hundred and twenty-seven thousand. That's what the fine total. Seven hundred thousand dollars. 
Yes, sir. But you have to realize, when we write tickets, like when a landlord is negligent and they leave stuff out and you guys call me and say, listen, there's a furniture all over the, the tree lawn out there. We have to go by and pick it up, okay? And get it off the street for you. So what we do is we write that landlord a $350 ticket. You would be surprised how many of those we write. Now here's our problem. That landlord lives in Oklahoma or Michigan. The city has a huge problem with absentee landlords. And, but even though we wrote that man a ticket, okay, and sent it to him, somebody's got to pay for the garbage to be taken to the landfill. Somebody's got to pay for the garbage to get picked up. Somebody's got to pay for the recycling. Okay? So that's kind of where our money goes, having to take care of all these responsibilities. It's not something we want to do, man. Believe me. I do not like the fact that my men have to walk around with badges because it makes us targets. I do not like the fact that I have to write you a citation because you didn't read something that we put out. But that's why I said, I took responsibility, did I not? I said, we did a poor job of educating. So we're back out trying to develop a program. Uh-oh. Over here. Well, Over here. It, You're it, pop. it did end, it did a poor <laughs> job of educating. Okay, okay, hang on, let me come back to you. Lady standing up with a black thing on her hand. <laughs> She's ready. <laughs> I've owned my house for 25 years in Cleveland. Yes, ma'am. Before that, I was in Cleveland on the east side. We've never paid anything for anything until you guys got these garbage cans, okay? That's number one. Now, weren't those new trucks that you got to automatically lift these garbage cans, correct? The old trucks from 95 didn't get this arm on them to lift them. That's right. All right, so for the now we got new trucks. Yes, ma'am. To pay, who's paying for those, okay? Now, four times last summer, and this is not an exaggeration, you can check your record. One, I don't have a microphone. You're sitting right here. Four times when they do our street, don't ask me why, because they're nice people, they skip houses. And before you know it, it's nine o'clock at night, Three or four garbage cans are out there, and they're still filled with garbage. And then you call your department, and they say, leave them out for 48 hours. They have 48 hours to come back. And you got some moron in a white truck that comes around, takes a picture, goes to the department that sends you out a fine. You get a fine, and now you got a homeowner sitting on a phone trying to take care of a fine that don't deserve and shouldn't have gotten. And if you notice, most of us here probably might be on fixed income, retired people that don't have time for this nonsense, that are physically doing everything they can, and your people are not educated. That's not okay. what we want. Now, can I, can, I, can I just for one second stop you? I understand what you're saying, ma'am. It's not, it's not one-sided. But I just want house. I understand. But you have to realize, when we, when the city started the program, I wasn't here. I can use that one. <laughs> so you can't take it totally out on me, okay? So I wasn't here when the city started the program, okay? We have people, not everybody wants to pick up garbage. Not everybody wants to get behind a garbage truck and deal with a garbage truck. And we, we can only afford to buy so many trucks one of those garbage trucks with the arm, one. Anybody want to venture to guess what that truck costs? $235,000. How much? $235,000. Add $100,000 to that and you got a deal. I went for statement to make and about the lady over there on the 10th Avenue, Long Street, 1214 House. They picked up the garbage one day. Next day was still there. I called the councilman at home and met you. Our councilman told me, called me back and said, I'll be there in a half hour. 25 minutes later, he was there with his assistant. He said, I'll take it by 12 o'clock tomorrow. I come home, 
I saw two big city trucks, two small ones, and two supervisors. That councilman kept his word. Now mm -hmm. the councilman do something like that. Get a problem, call the councilman, he can help you out. This, this councilman should be mayor of Cleveland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, you know, um, it's, it's great that you guys support him, and I appreciate that because I thank the world of him myself. He's been very fair to me. He's been one of the, one of the best ones to work with when I have an issue with residents. Um, I, I will tell you that, that $335,000 per truck. Now, we only have 25 that we bought, uh, is that six years ago now? And we just got five more. The 25 that we bought are almost worn out. Well, how come they have a helper besides when they're doing it? I don't get that either. Okay. And, and that's, you have to understand the way the program's structured, folks. Supposedly, we're not, as I said, I'm going to go back to the way the program's designed. You're only supposed to have the card out, okay, and your black card, your blue card, four tires, okay. That's the way the program's designed. I can, you know, at any time, I could, next time I come, please invite me back. I will bring you pictures that we've taken all over town of sites where you go. There's so much garbage on a tree lawn. They can't pick it up with an automated truck. We have to send the truck that you load from behind. You remember those trucks, right? You have to send that truck. Then we have to send a truck to pick tires up. And I apologize, ma'am, I was not here, but I do represent the city, so I'll take the blame for it. However, I was not here when the program was put together, and I don't know why, it's, why it, they did what they did, or why they provided you with the limited amount of education that they did. All I can do is try to tell you that we're working toward and we're striving as quickly as possible to update the program and the citizens, ma'am. But it's a tough job. I want to go back over here to this lady here because she wasn't finished. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. The part two of it, uh, the big confusion about the bags outside is when they said stop bagging stuff. Yes, ma'am. All your garbage loose into the garbage can. So other people, and there's families with children that have diapers and all kinds of nonsense stuff. The garbage can's already full, so they have plastic bags from their kitchen garbage can out on the lawn. I'm questioning why you think we want to buy leaf bags when we have garbage cans like this that we've had for years. Yeah. You know, that looks like one of the cans that got taken out of one of the, the um, receptacles. Okay, probably was. <laughs> no, and, and you know what? I understand what you're saying, ma'am. My but guys have picked them up and thrown those leaves in. They've never said a word. You're going to tell me next week, Monday, I might get a $100 citation? Well, me. what I'm telling you is it's it's a possibility because what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to comply with the same policy all over the city, okay? You can't get a truck that can suck leaves and come down the street like that? You need to talk to that man right there because you know what? He we wants do, them. We do oh, have. Come on, oh, they're terrible. To pick up leaves. They don't do it right. Ah. It's not waste collection. That's public work. That's right. And, and you know what? I, I can appreciate that because I've seen it in lots of towns. But as, as he said, a lot of times those trucks will work terrible. And you'll end up with a bigger mess than you want. You can eat off the street in Fairfield. They have them. It's half the size of our ward. There's 17 wards. Okay. So, um, sir, you had a question, sir? Okay. I want to go back to the clarification. Um, from the receptacle. I'm quoting right from his handout to set out guidelines. All leaves and garbage clippings must be contained up to 20 bags a week. For four months, I've been trying to get an answer whether 20 bags means 20 
bag that I have to buy that will go into a landfill and rot for the next 20 years and not decompose, or these things that I can use that I've had for 25 years and that work fine, that can put a mulching can cover, they can be used over and over, dumped into the truck, dumped in a landfill, and they'll decompose. Now I'm told, I'm getting three different answers. I've talked to the councilman, I've talked to the mayor's office, I've talked to you. On August 7th, I talked to you. That's we had it out on the phone, and you said, no, they don't work, and it's 40 pounds now, not 70 pounds, yes. which is news to me. And on top of that, over the last year, I've gone from having 10 of these to eight. Sometimes they'll take the whole thing, and the leaves disappear, or the grass clippings disappear, and the can disappears. Okay. So now I'm down to eight. So I want to know, I even talked to the legal department, and they threw up their hands and said, I don't know what the hell to do. Well, I can, I can tell you, sir, the way we're trying to deal with these right now, sir. All I want to answer, though, can I still use these? Sir, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to answer your question. If you'd like me to answer it, I'll be happy to. If not, then I'll move on to the next person. Okay? Who's next? Yes, ma'am. I don't have a complaint. I have something nice to say. Well, thank you, ma'am. Last year, um, I don't put out my recyclable, my blue container every week because I don't fill it. And this one week I had both the black and the blue out there and I looked out and they had picked up both the garbage and the recyclable. Yes ma'am. So as I was going out to bring them into the backyard, the street sweeper was going down the street. I guess he was going down the street. Anyway, when I got to the front of my house there, the uh, black garbage can was gone. Uh -oh. And I said, who the heck would, didn't have a garbage can? <laughs> so I came in and I called your department. It was treated very well. Said that my garbage can was stolen. And I uh, had, had to fill, give her information. And then she told me that I, this is the only bad part, that I had to go to the first district police department and make a report because they're too busy to come to my house. Now, I said, okay. I said, uh, the policeman that lives next door, I'll let him know. There's a little policeman. <laughs> a few minutes later, within 15 minutes, someone called me back, took more information from me, and within two, within an hour and a half, I got my new can. Apparently, that street sweeper somehow or another sucked up that. <laughs> Well, and I will tell you, we are, we are really working hard. Two and a half years ago before I got here, we had a huge backlog. It was, it was taking sometimes seven to 14 days, personal, to deliver roll cars, okay? Now, now, if you call our office before noon, we usually can have you a roll car the next day, okay? Now that we have them, okay? We were out of them for a while, so if anybody had to, be right with you, ma'am. We were out of them for a while, so we had to put some people on hold. But now that we've got them back, we're, we're back on 24 hour delivery. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. On the other paper, it says plastic bottles and jugs. So, are we going through the one through seven, or just the uh, plastic bottles and jugs, and one through five with with pills? They they put one through seven on the on the sheet simply to simplify it for people. We prefer strictly, but our vendor will take one through seven. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh oh. The first one That's why they call one arm bandits. <laughs>
tell you that we are working very hard to the point where we're now disciplining employees for leaving the cans either in the street or in people's driveways. What happens sometimes they get in such a hurry because, and I'm going to be very, very blunt with you, okay? Because we're running behind, we don't have enough people, we don't have enough equipment. Our people are trying to get done without having to go into excess overtime. Okay? So they're rushing. Okay? That's not an excuse. That's the truth. But when we find out that they've done this, we are disciplining our employees so that they, they'll understand we're not going to tolerate this. Your job is to put it back on the tree lawn where you got it. And that's what we're working on right now. One thing we're working on. I hope that, I hope that helps to, a little bit. The other thing is when Always remember, folks, because that arm has to lift. Try to put your can away from a tree. Okay? We don't want to damage your trees. I'm sorry. It does happen. It's a mechanical arm. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know you just mentioned that you're working on getting the folks to do it, but uh, I was going to say one of my comments was going to be 158, 157. All the streets around there. I go in the morning, and all the cans are real nice up in the middle of the tree lawn, just separated grapes. I mean, they're all in a row down there. And I come back later on in the day, and they're leaning out into the street, which is really dangerous because, you know, these are side streets, and if you get too far over to try and let somebody go by, the mirrors hit these things, and they stick. they're in the street, they're leaning all the way down the street. And interestingly enough, on one side of the street, most of them are leaning. On the other side of the street, they're leaving them in the street. On the side that people park on, yes, that's where they leave them in the street. And it's like, not only are they in the street, but now you can't even park there. Right. You know, so, and this uh, is day after, you know, week after week. After. Well, I'm hoping you'll see an improvement as we begin to, as we begin to get harder on the employees and start writing them up. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I am definitely in favor of unions. However, our union is very strong, and there's a long list of, of issues that you have to go through before you can discipline somebody. But we're, it's catching up with these folks, okay? And we're now able to start disciplining them sooner, and we're getting their attention. So be patient with me, please. I've only been here two and a half years, but I'm working hard to, to give you a better program, okay? Yes, sir. I'm coming back to you, the sir. The question is about the plastic bags. Yes, sir. Like the bags, like the tall kitchen bags, like we can have to buy in, uh, like Sam's. Yes, sir. So I put my recyclables in there and then put them in the can. Is that acceptable? No, no sir. No. So I got to just put the stuff in the can. You just put the stuff loose in the can. Right. And those blue bags, the vendor hates those blue bags because he's got an automated system and has those blue bags begin to come apart. They drop down into his equipment and they wrap around the equipment so and he has to shut it down. Same thing like the tall kitchen bags? Yes, sir. Same, same, same? Same thing. Just put your, just put your recycling, please, loose in the can. That's the way it's best. And then the bag you get at the grocery store, like the garbage in, you just throw it in the garbage? Yes, sir. Okay? Yeah. I, I got to take care of this gentleman right here, sir. I'll come back to you. To get back to recycle. Sir? To get back to recycle. Yes, sir. I've been trying to recycle since the program started. Yes, sir. And I think I've got the information from the waste department at, at least three different times over the years. And each time I get it, it's different. Yes, sir. And how are you supposed to know what, what to recycle it? The first one we got, it said to go by that triangle. Mm -hmm. The last one I got said that has nothing to do with recycling. Uh, unfortunately, sir, that does have everything to do with recyclable because if that stamp isn't on it, it's not recyclable. Well, that's what it said on the, on the sheet. Well, again, I, I, I apologize. I wasn't here at the time. We're trying to redo the entire education program right now, okay? Which means this next time we're going to send out literature and it's going to say, Everything else we sent out, forget it. This is the new rules. Okay? Everybody in Cuyahoga County and the 
program. Every house, every no, ma'am. Cuyahoga County has their own program. Okay, program this program, separate. this program is separate from the county's program. Well, do they have separate regardless? Do they have that? The, the county does not have that type of collection program. They have collection locations, and the, the cities that are within the county have their own programs, just like Cleveland. Okay, so the county building, you don't pick up their garbage? We pick up their garbage, and it's, it's in some of the county buildings, yes, ma'am, but they're, it's their garbage. Is this their garbage and not recyclable? No, ma'am. We don't have a commercial recycling program. They have, they have people that work for the county that take care of their own recycling form. You know, I think this is like confusing. The state of Ohio, every direction you go has different rules. Yes, and it was in the plain dealer, if you gentlemen are reading the plain dealer, Never. you should know what you should. <laughs> yeah, do another video. There is such disparity in all these places you could go from Cleveland to Fairview, I, I, right on the outside, and you are doing what you thought was right because you're coming from Cleveland when Fairview says, oh, no, we don't do that. Why is it all of you getting together and making just one rule? So wherever you move to, you know what you're doing. Each entity has its own separate government, government body, so therefore... Try to get all those government bodies to agree on anything, ma'am, and I will personally buy you a steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I, need to, I, need, I appreciate your concern, but I need to move on, okay? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this recycling again, when you said everything in the triangle from one to seven, is that any plastic container that has a one to a seven in the triangle is recyclable? Right now it is, yes ma'am. But that what we really encourage people to focus on, it's the easiest thing to do is beverage, beverage containers. So that's and, what we tried and, to do. And like deter detergent bottles and beverage containers, uh, so water bottles. But sometimes so the one channel, one um, news channel said that what they called clamshells were not recyclable. But a plastic container that had food that has one to five, one to seven on it is now still recyclable. Yes, ma'am. Yay! They put them back in my recycle card. Yeah. But it, it, and it's confusing because of all the different programs that are out there. Okay? But, you know, if you go over to, if you go over to Strongsville, they don't take that stuff. Do they recycle in Strongsville at all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'll stand up. And I'm notes. I'm sorry? And I've been taking notes. <laughs> but I have some recycling questions. You guys, I can't. Stand here. Televisions. If we leave them out on the tree lawn before you guys get there, they're smashed. Damn. That's one. Two, paint strippers. What was it? Ma'am, I'm sorry. I'm hard of hearing. I've got one ear that's completely deaf. I apologize. So does he. <laughs> one was the TV. What we're supposed to do with that. Two, paint stripper. Under toxic thing. Uh, three, tires. Has that ripped or went out? The wheels in them? And when? And four, I have some more on that plastic. Because okay. Well, let's start with the tires first. That's the easiest one. Okay. We don't take tires with rims, okay? Your regular collection day, regular collection day, okay? Not your bulk week. You can do it on bulk week too if you'd like. You can put four tires right there with your blue can and your black can, okay? And up to 20 bags of yard waste. That's a regular pickup for us, okay? On your bulk day, you can add three large pieces of furniture, okay? As far as your TV goes. Okay. We do not pick up electronics at the curbside. We do sometimes when they're small, but sometimes people put TVs out as big as that bar over there, and my people can't lift them. Okay? But we encourage you to drop, drop them off. We have a drop-off site at 5600 Carnegie where you can drop off your hazardous waste. Once a month, you can drop off your hazardous waste at the transfer station. Okay? And if you have something that can't wait, 
our transfer station, 3727 Ridge Road, will take four times a year. As long as you don't drive in there with a vehicle that has commercial plates on it or a trailer, you can bring four times a year a load of garbage to the transfer station with no charge. Construction waste, anything? I'm sorry? Construction waste, anything in that dump? We prefer you don't bring entire houses, but you can bring a little sheet rock and stuff. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I now the clamshells are okay as long as they say one to seven? Yes, ma'am. That includes yogurt cups? As long as they have the triangle on the bottom and they're one to seven. And because we go there a lot, McDonald's bread cups? No. Unless they have the one to seven on the bottom. Okay. I'll go through what I've got in the trash instead of recycling. Okay. Run in doubt, throw it out. Yes, sir. Okay. Way in the back. I'm sorry. Okay. Sir. I'm looking at setup guidelines. We haven't touched this at all. It says all mattresses, box springs, and cloth furniture must be wrapped in plastic. Yes, sir. Where do you get this plastic from? Right? You can buy. You can buy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sir. You, you haul it has it right there, but I just did it. Yeah, and and he's right. You haul has it. The cheapest place to buy, honestly. You can buy, a, you know the drop cloths that you use for painting? Yeah. You can buy them for 97 cents over at uh, Walmart. Okay. And you just take that and wrap it around there and put some duct tape on it and you're ready to roll. Well, what's the purpose to that? The reason, the reason we do that, sir, is, and I'm glad Mr. Kane is here, we have, the city of Cleveland has the largest amount of cases of bed bugs in Ohio. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a very, very bad title to have, but we do. We have the most bed bugs in the state. And, and that's because we have so many people that are transient, so many people that are low income, and you know, it's just a sign of where we are right now. And it's supposed to just contain them? This is supposed to contain them long enough for us to throw them into the truck. Okay, and then if you look at the proper setup in here, Yes, sir. There's a top, there's a chair in there, and I don't have plastic on it. Well, it depends on the chair, sir. Not the clock chair. Okay. Then, you know, what we asked you to, to, to do, at the time that was taken, okay. uh, you know, we were just using whatever we could at the time. Okay. Right. For example, but I appreciate you pointing it out, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you have your hand on, sir? I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. My metal plate on the front of both of my garbage containers has come off. It's flipped over to the side. And I tried to fix it. I tried to move it over. You talking about the little round bar? Okay. Hold on one second. Herschel, would you go over and get that young lady's address? Let's get those cans fixed for tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Because they try and pick it up and the garbage runs And it tips over. Yes, ma'am. Those, those are what they call lift bars. That's what the little thing picks it up for. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Quick question on the Ridge Road facility. Can you yes, have um, an out-of-state plate? If you came in there with an out-of-state plate. Can't do it. Like to, so we can't borrow a truck from someone who's out-of-state? Okay. No. And, and that's to protect you, ma'am, because that is also funded by the money that we get, the 875 a month. But even if like it was our ID, if we took it with our driver's license, they wouldn't take it. That's right, because it came in a, in a, in a vehicle that's from out of state. Yes, ma'am. The page, the page. When do you have the like a pickup? You can you can bring your paint and chemicals to 5600 Carnegie five days a five days a week. Okay, we're open five days a week there. You can bring your electronics. Computers, TVs, uh, you know, little microwave ovens, anything that's small and electronic, you can bring it to our to our office as well. 5600 Carnegie, and we'll be happy to take it. Nine to three. You can also bring your um, you can also bring your shredding if you want to have um, your documents shred. You can either put them in our shred box or you can stand right there while we shred it for you. Okay, and that's Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, the white stuff's coming. Well, we have like three feet of snow on our tree lawn. Where do we put our cans? On your tree lawn. Do we have to pick them up? <laughs> yeah, I put it out on the street or in the apron. You know, it, and I, I wish I could. I wish I had an easy answer. I'm not for that, that strong. I'm not picking it up. I wish I had an easy answer for you, man, but that's we, what everybody has to put regardless of what time of the year. Because I don't want to get, I don't want to get fined. Where are we going to put it? Most people in here see that. Put it on your tree lawn. There And put it there. Shovel the sidewalk. Shovel the spot for it. Shovel the spot on your tree lawn. It's not going to hurt. Oh, wait a minute. That young lady in the back again with the black thing on her hand. What, is that a wristband? Is that what that is? Ah, okay. I, I had carpal tunnel and I had to wear one of those for a while. This yes, ma'am. This is beyond carpal tunnel. I got bit by a dog on this hand when I came home from surgery on that hand. So neither one of them healed right. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. I'm going to pay you a compliment that some people don't, I don't think they understand. If it's not Gulf Week, I had an incident two years ago where my glass shower door broke. Yes, ma'am. And I called on Monday morning before they even picked up and got permission to have them out there. So I brought them outside. Garbage men took them away with no problem. And they gave me a number on the phone, took my name, just in case there'd be a problem. So I appreciate that some things are working and going correctly. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate that. Some things do actually work, believe it or not. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay. Glass. A um, couple of items. Light bulbs, mirrors, windows, trash. Okay. Um, uh, the light bulbs have mercury. Okay. Regular light bulbs? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. The older light bulbs, the newer light bulbs are even more deadly. Okay. And the mirrors have lead. All right. Um, the light bulbs, you can take the load. You can place the, the carts out no earlier than noon the day before you pick up. You move the carts by noon the following day. Now, the following day after you left them out, or the following day, the day following pickup? You're supposed to put them out the day before your pickup at noon, yeah. and then the, immediately the day after, bring them back. The day after pickup, or the day after you pick up? If, if you put it out the day before your pickup at noon, yeah. then your pickup day is in the middle. Yeah. So the ne very next day, you got to have them back in by noon. Okay? Okay. Okay? Got it. All right. Yes, ma'am. This young lady back here hasn't had one to fire at me yet. Is it a good one or a bad one? Uh, just your future development. Who takes care of your website? Because a lot of these questions, why not? Thank I have God, a somebody is finally this addressing this that. This and not this and not this. You know, I mean, this is nice where we can see pictures, but you know, if your staff and all of us could go on a website and say, nope, I can't do this, at least we'd all be on the same page instead of every department people call getting a slightly different answer. I, I will be very honest with you, ma'am. That was one of the first things I noticed when I got when I when I landed here two and a half years ago, and I've been working desperately and frantically to get it redone. And we're finally getting to the point where they're building, they're they're beginning to start from the very beginning and work toward us. It will happen. It's not going to happen tomorrow. But it is something that's on target right now, and I promise you, it's going to be user friendly. The one we've got now. Is not user friendly. Quick question. Just wanted to know how um, you have been the parts find. I understand that there's all kinds of stuff, you know, laying around the garbage cans, and you've got, you know, materials in there recycling garbage. We're going to be fine. But are they going to be looking at I mean, if you're confused and don't know what goes in the recycling, you take all No. What happens is when we pull up to a can, and they see stuff sticking out. As I said, I can bring out pictures. You wouldn't believe. We pull up, and there's two by fours, or there's bags of clothing 
hanging out of the recycling bin. We can't take that. They don't take recycling. I mean, they don't take clothes for recycling at the plant. So that's when they'll issue you a citation. Otherwise, they're not going to go through and look at everything. I promise. Okay? Now, if the same two by fours are cut up into pieces and thrown in a black can, it's okay. Though. I'll give you a ticket. Oh, really? We don't take construction material. Okay. Not at the curbside. Uh oh, Marty's pulling. He's got the he's got the big hook out. Oh, he's I, pulling me in. I think we're just winding down. And, and one of the most important things to point out that I do regularly at City Hall, but not that much in the neighborhood, it's a big city, right? And, and you guys would have no idea the things that Herschel and Anthony and the commissioners see every day. When you talk tree lawns, you talk bed bugs, you talk tires. Um, I mean, and, and it's, it takes me a long time. You guys have been here a long time. You know West Park, you know Ward 17, and, and the commissioner had a little bit of education, right? We're predominantly owner-occupied. We love the city of Cleveland. We love to do the right thing. We want to recycle. Um, you don't see that in a lot of neighborhoods. So the ordinances, the application, the administration of the ordinances is, is across the board. So nobody wanted to have a $350 ticket in on the code, right? An ordinance that calls for $350 ticket. But if you see the stuff and the abuse that they put on the city of Cleveland and on our resources and on our staff, then you realize that we need something like that. And um, a lot of these questions, I think, I, I can guarantee you they appreciate one of you all being here um, because you want to learn to do the right thing. Because in a lot of neighborhoods, you wouldn't get eight people. Um, you wouldn't get anybody who wanted to comply. So it's always important to put that in the, you know, I have to remind myself continually that, you know, the things that we do downtown and the ordinances we write are for the entire city. How does that apply to Ward 17 is when we have to work on communication skills. And these guys have been really good, which was a horrible, bad, the whole reason we had curbside recycling is because the key people demanded it, right? Why can't we recycle? Why can't we have carts like Lakewood and Fairview? Why do we look so different and our tree lawns are full of crap every Tuesday? So this was what people wanted. The application of it was horrible. The efficiencies in the program are completely lost. Our tree lawns were emptied by three men or women in one pass, five, seven years ago. Now, one way, two ways, garbage. One way, two way, recycle. One way, two way, bulk. Think about it. We didn't have the personnel nor the equipment. We're trying to get there. It has not been easy. The commissioner's been great. These guys, his staff, um, I wanted to make that point, and I wanted to thank Steve McLaughlin and the Kiwanis for putting this together. Cretan Center is a wonderful partner. Feels like I'm here twice a week. Uh, and I also wanted to introduce J.D. Smith in the back, who is with Cam's Corners Development Corporation. We're there to help, as is Bill. Um, but anything we can do to educate. I fought with the administration for years that you don't educate by enforcement. And then they send out another flyer with that information before any of these guys were approving things. It's been a struggle. The website's going to help. Education on recycling, I think we can all agree that it's important. I think we all know, if you've seen, watch 60 Minutes on Landfills, you know that we got to do some things differently. We are a consumer-rich society, and all we do is eat and throw it out and think that wherever it goes, we don't care. We have to start caring. And uh, I just wanted to say those two things before, because hands were going down, it's getting late, but the Cretan Center is a wonderful partner, and join the Kiwanis if you have any interest. Before I go, I just, want to, I just want to remind everybody that if you want or you feel you need another blue can or a black can, you may lease one. Okay? Now, it's a one time fee. Your garbage bill does not go up, but those cans cost the city of Cleveland $56.80. We charge you a one-time lease fee of $50. That's all we charge you, okay? Your, your bill stays $8.75 a month. If you want four cans, Herschel will bring you four cans tomorrow, okay? But it's gonna cost you $50 a can. And those that is available to help you. 
Some people are taking more cans so they can put their yard waste in it because that way the machine can pick it up. Okay? Well, that's saving you money. Why, why do you charge us for it? It's saving you money, sir, whether you believe it or not. Those, those machines are built for efficiency. We can't pick up those round cans, sir. Been here for a long time. Not with the machines. The sir, we're things. trying to get away from the people. That's one of the problems. Our, our costs are out of control, sir. If you understand any finances at all, sir, then you understand your most expensive, your most expensive labor is, is labor. That's your most expensive cost. Yes, sir. I uh, wonder if you could implement it, because I live on a street four Fortunately, on my side of the street, I don't have parking. Yes, sir. But I feel bad it's on the other side of the street where you have all the parking. It's just the people put out their trash cans, and the cars are in the way. It's just, it, it, it seems like it's inefficient. It seems Thank like you, it makes sense to have the garbage cans in the driveway so the truck can use its arms to get them in and out. There should be some further thought on how to do that. Well, the problem is, sir, when you do that, if you, if you say, okay, you can put your can in the driveway, the next guy can put it in the tree line. But if you, if, you got a truck, if you got a car there, you're not getting those cans. It's out of the truck. Yes, sir. That's part of the problem. We need a parking ban on collection day. Or the other thing is have a trailer, have a trailer, a guy to put them out in the street, and a trailer to put them back. That's, that's we do when we have enough people, believe it or not. But we don't always have enough people. Do you find... Oh, I, I enjoy the beating, let me tell you. you find it's 10% of the people who are abusers who are causing 90% of the problems? Mm, I'd say there's a higher percentage than that. Okay. But I, I, I want to thank everybody, and I appreciate it. One more question? You promise you're the last one. Yeah, I'm going to be here for a few minutes afterwards because I want to have a cup of coffee. Go ahead, ma'am. Aerosol cans, we ask you to go ahead and, and put those in hazardous waste because lots of times the, the can's not completely empty. Even though it doesn't spray anymore, there's still residue in the can. Okay? I will be here for a few more minutes, and I appreciate the invitation. Thank you so much. Later, we're wrapping up the meeting at uh, the uh, Creighton Center there in uh, on West 168th in Cleveland's West Side in the Cam's Corner neighborhood. The Kiwanis Club of West Park uh, hosting Cleveland Division of Waste Commissioner Paul Alcantar and uh, answering questions for a little over an hour from uh, roughly 40 45 residents uh, that attended tonight. Gave a little bit of history about the uh, ordinance that's currently in effect in Cleveland. And like I said, answering a couple of questions about some of the details about how um, waste collection works in Cleveland, some of the costs associated not only to the customer, but also uh, costs associated by the city, uh, how fines are actually levied, uh, how different citations are issued, uh, who collects money for those uh, citations and where that money goes. Um, also in attendance tonight was uh, Ward 17 Council Member Marty Keene, uh, who spoke a few times. Um, I'll leave this on YouTube for a while. Also make sure to head over to the website MikeDean.com. I'll put a link there in the description about that where you can get a quick summary of the events that were going on today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, on Cleveland's West Side, I'm Michael Eastman.